ever wondered how computer programs make decisions in code? In this video, you're going to learn how to make decisions in code by using conditional statements. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on my next videos. There are times in software development in which a piece of code is faced with multiple options or possibilities and it needs to make a decision about how to deal with these options or possibilities. For that decision-making process to be possible, that block of code needs to analyze some data in order to make the appropriate decision. But how is that analysis carried out? Well, that analysis is done through the use of conditional statements. Simple words like if, else, and elif, which in Python is a contraction of the words else and if, I used to allow the block of code to contemplate different scenarios and to provide that block of code with a distinct way of dealing with each of these scenarios. The syntax for the if, elif, and else conditional statements is pretty straightforward. We begin by writing the keyword if, followed by the first condition the block of code is going to have a distinct solution for. All of this on a single line. Note that the condition is followed by a colon. This tells Python that the next line is part of this block of code, and as such, it should be indented four spaces. Just a word about indentation. Indentation is very important in Python. You must pay close attention to which line or lines of code should be indented. Otherwise, you'll face many errors in your code. Continuing with this block of code on this slide, the next line begins with the word elif. This is another keyword. This suggests that what follows is another logical condition or scenario for which a different solution must be provided. As before, we end the line with a colon. And again, the next line is part of this conditional statement and therefore must be indented. Finally, the next line begins with the word else, another keyword. This means that what follows is not one of the options or scenarios provided for the previous lines. In other words, if X happens, you deal with it with a solution specifically designed for X. If Y happens, you deal with it with a solution specifically designed for Y. Otherwise, or anything else, is dealt with with the statement that follows the keyword else. Please note that in this example, there are only two ELIF statements. However, when dealing with this in actual code, there could be several or many ELIF statements. Also, there may not be the need for an else statement at all. It all depends on the specific situation. This may seem confusing to you now, but it'll become clear once we start writing the actual code to implement the syntax. If you're enjoying the content of this video, hit the like button and stick around. At the end, I'm going to provide you with a link to all my Python videos. So I'm going to open up my browser. As you've seen before, I'm going to type my compiler. I've already covered my compiler with you, so I'm not going to get into details today. I'm just going to click on Python. The topic that I have for today is very interesting. It's very cool. And you're going to learn how to how to allow the code to make decisions. Oftentimes you write a program and within that program it's got to be some sort of algorithm that has to decide whether to do one thing versus to do something else. So I'm going to write up here uh, this is we're going to call this making decisions on this is also called conditionals okay and this is part one that's going to be a part two so you have learned to create a variable so we're going to create a variable here right now called number and we're going to assign a value to this um, variable we're going to assign five so this is a number five not a string five and it's being assigned to this variable called number and the variable is a space in memory where this value is kept, okay? 
and, and the memory of the computer. So we're going to write something like this. If number and then we're going to use two equal signs which means if number is equal to okay let's say five so let me stop here so this is a construct in Python it starts with the word if so when you start with the word if you're gonna write a number of lines that basically are gonna create different ways of dealing with the code okay so the value and the variable number right now is five so we're gonna say well if the value is five we're gonna do something if the value is greater than five we're gonna do something else if the value is less than five we're gonna do something totally different okay that's what we're gonna do here right now we're gonna let the I'm gonna show you how this is gonna play out so we start by saying if if is a, a command in Python number is making reference to the variable name number when you see two equal signs that means that you are comparing one thing to another it doesn't mean that you are assigning a value to something it means that you're just comparing whereas when you see one single equal sign you're actually assigning a value to a particular variable so that's the difference one equal sign you're assigning a value to a variable you're putting a value into a variable when you have two equal signs you're basically comparing something in this case we compare the value in the variable number with the number five so if number equals five I'm just gonna have the computer print uh, this is or the value is equal to five okay just to keep it simple so this is one option and then if you have like multiple options of how things could happen instead of saying if again you're gonna say elif so you're gonna write it this way elif which basically is a contraction else plus if but that's how the language works so you gotta memorize this okay so instead of just writing another if statement like this when you have statements that are part of the same analysis the first one you start with an if and the next ones you start with elif so it's el like that elif same thing as say elif number is greater than this is a si the sign for greater right if number is greater than five observe that at the end of each of these statements because the statement is not complete there's going to be another line of code then you have to end that statement with colon these two dots over here okay on this line here for example that's the end of this block of code that begins with if it ends right over here so because it ends over here you don't need to put colon here all right but since we're starting we're starting another line of code uh, another if statement if you will then you have to end that line with colon and when you uh, hit enter that's going to bring the cursor right where it should be there's indentation here so the cursor is not here in the beginning of the line the cursor is tabbed four spaces into that line and that's how Python works you have to be very careful with where you begin writing your code on each line because if it is sometimes it's starting in the beginning of the line sometimes that that line of code is part of another line of code so it starts indented okay all it does is to show you that this print statement because it is indented it's part of this if statement right here now we have an if statement that ends here so the other part of this same statement is going to go indented right here and we're just going to print a similar message we're going to say in quotes because this is a string that we're printing we're going to say the value is greater than five okay and then we're going to do another if statement we're going to write just like we wrote this one elif or elif number 
is less than 5 colon we're going to print in quotes the value is less than 5. This is just as an example. We could just write anything we want. Okay, so look at this here. What, what is this doing? This block of code here is going to analyze the value contained in the variable named number. Okay, and we have defined that variable up here. If I run the program by pressing this button over here, look at what's going to happen. It's going to print the value is equal to 5. Why? Because the value of number is 5 right now. Let's say, for example, that I change this value to 6 now. What's going to happen? We're going to press here to run the program. And it's going to print the value is greater than 5. So instead of printing this line here, it's printing this line right over here. See? And what if we put uh, 3? What is it going to do? We're going to run the program. And it says the value is less than 5. So this code is analyzing the contents of this variable number. Anytime I change the value of this variable number, a different message is going to be printed out accordingly. That's pretty cool. So what if we do like minus one? Which one do you think is going to print? Let's see. It says the value is less than five, which is true. Minus one is less than five. That's an example of using a conditionals or a decision structure to make decisions in Python. In this particular example, we did that with numbers. In the next video, we're going to do that using strings. Just, just note that the message that we are printing on the screen is just a message so you can understand you know, what the code structure is doing. Okay, uh, And it's basically saying you know, what kind of value that is. So if I were to put here one last time 100 and I click run it says the value is greater than 5 yes because 100 is greater than 5 okay and as I promised earlier here's a link to all my Python videos so this is a structure they have to memorize how to do you start with an if statement followed by a variable name and then you're gonna use something called a logical operator so this is a logical operator, which means equal. This is a logical operator, which means greater than. And this is a logical operator, which means less than. And that's how we compare things and make decisions in Python.